The first step before breaking down our activities is to thoroughly review the IFC drawings to gain a clear understanding of our project scope. This is crucial for developing our project schedule. We need to focus on specific drawing details, such as determining the number of floors in the project, estimating the distributed quantity for each floor, identifying the location of BOQ items like mechanical equipment and electrical fixtures. Lastly, understanding the installation details of the BOQ items. There are two options to review our drawings. The first option is to manually open each drawing file in PDF or CAD format, then estimate and note down the necessary details. The second option, which I personally use in my projects, is to use estimating software called PlanSwift. This software is valuable not only for estimators, but also for planning engineers. While we won't discuss the details of using PlanSwift in this course, I'll provide you with a brief overview of how it can be utilized for planning purposes. The first step is to add your drawing files. Open the folder where your drawings are located and copy the folder directory. Paste this directory in the PlanSwift Browse folder box. Then click on the Check All button. Keep the default settings and click Next and Finish. One of the features I really appreciate in PlanSwift is its ability to quickly preview drawings, much faster than opening them in PDF or CAD. Additionally, it allows us to organize our drawings neatly in a folder. Simply click on the folder icon, give it a suitable name, and drag all the drawings into that folder. Repeat this process for all drawing disciplines. Our goal in using PlanSwift is to efficiently review all the crucial drawing details required for creating our schedule. We will organize these details in a folder for easy reference and add estimates to create a more accurate breakdown of our project scope. You only need basic knowledge of how to use it, as our main goal is to leverage it for planning purposes. We can also add more subfolders, or rename our drawings to specify floors, depending on how we prefer to organize our drawings. Another useful PlanSwift feature that will greatly assist us is the ability to measure and estimate the quantities needed in our schedule. PlanSwift offers several measuring tools such as area, linear, segment, and count tools. For our purposes, we'll use a few of these tools to quickly distribute our quantities. The first step is to scale our drawings especially when using area or linear measurements. To do this, click on the Scale button and choose the metric system with meters as the unit of measure. Select any known measurement on the drawing, for example, 4.05 meters, and choose the end-to-end -end points of that measurement. This will automatically scale our drawing, ensuring that our estimates have accurate values. Remember our BOQ items for footings includes the strip footings, isolated and mat footings. So we need to roughly estimate their distribution. What I choose to do is to measure the area and assume that they have all the same thickness. You can choose to estimate more accurately based on the footing schedule, but remember that this is primarily for planning purposes and not for precise quantity surveying. Using the area tool, add an estimate for strip footings. 
select each corner of the footings while holding down the shift key. Next, add a new area for our isolated footings. For walls, I prefer using the linear tool to measure the total perimeter of the wall and then calculate its weightage against the total concrete wall perimeter. Lastly, we'll use the count tool to tally our columns. Simply select the columns on our drawings. We can use the same count description we created for the ground floor for the other floors as well. If you don't have PlanSwift, you can still manually review the project drawings. Also, you can collaborate with team members to gather these estimates, though you should be mindful of time constraints as this may delay our task. The benefit of performing this exercise is that it provides us with a clear understanding of our project scope, which is essential for creating a baseline schedule and effectively managing progress during the construction phase. In our next lesson, we will explore the distribution method for breaking down the general activity amounts into detailed cost loads for each activity. Stay tuned for our next lesson.